Hi, I want to give you a quick overview about how to put together your newsletter. You can see on my desktop I have this newsletter folder. I want you to create a newsletter folder. Inside that folder, you'll see I've got a Microsoft Word document that's got the text of my newsletter, what I want to, the articles that I want to put in it. I've also got my InDesign document that I started and set up. And then I have a folder called Links. In the Links folder, I've got all the images that I plan to use with my newsletter. Let's take a look at what I've built so far. Here's my newsletter. So this is page one. As I scroll down here, you'll see pages two and three, they're facing pages, and page four. So I'm scrolling through these pages with this scroll bar here. I'm actually using my mouse's trackpad. It's a little easier for me. But you can also look through the pages by looking at this pages panel. When you open that, you can see here, there's page one. It's blue because we're on it. I can double click page two, and here we are at page two. There's page three, it's facing page two. And there's page four, it's the last page of the document. Pages one and four are looked at by themselves. Page one is a right-hand page, and page four is a left-hand page. Pages two and three are facing pages. So I can view this document in several ways. Let me make my screen a little larger here. Um, and I'm going to close this panel by clicking on these two carrots here, these two arrows. So I can look at this. This is normal mode. If you look in the view drop down window, there it is, screen mode, normal. I also like looking at it in presentation mode. Notice that in normal mode, you can see the pink lines right here and here and here in between the columns and you can see the light blue guidelines. So if I want to look at it without all those lines, I can click presentation mode. And there it is with uh, none of those guides. This just shows me exactly what I've put on the page. And you'll notice too that I can use, as long as I have this black arrow tool selected, I can use the W key to hide and show those guides. I think that's easier than going from view to screen mode to preview. That's actually the mode that the W gives you. So I go back and forth between W a lot. Another keyboard shortcut I use a lot is Command plus to zoom in on things. And then I'll scoot it over and take a look at, maybe I was looking at the page number, or command negative to zoom out. Command zero is fit a page in the window. Command one is 100%. So there's lots of great uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use to look at. The other thing I wanna point out here is the ways in which I have created Unity. You might remember that unity is a really important principle of design. So something you'll notice on every page is the same page number and the same orange bar at the top. Let me scroll through these so you can see them. See pages two and three, same orange bar at the top, same page numbers. Let's go to page four. Same orange bar at the top, I've allowed it to be interrupted by this element, but that's fine. It's the same orange bar. And I did not put a page number on page four, which is common. A lot of times on the very last page of a newsletter, people, they know it's the last page. If they wanna know the exact number, they can look at the page before it. Um, so that's one way that I've created Unity. If you look at my pages panel, you'll see above all four of these pages is something called the A Master. I'm gonna double click on that and you'll see that on my master pages, that's where I've put the orange line and the page numbers. I'll teach you how to do page numbers later on in this. Let's go back to the regular page. There's page one. So just a couple more things about Unity. You'll notice that every page has three columns marked out. In this page, I've used the column guides for the left-hand column 
and then I made my article text two columns wide. Let's see what I did on these. Same story. I made the inside information two columns wide and the outside information. See, you have page numbers on the outside edges and on the outside edges, I have things that are more graphic oriented. I do have a few graphics in here, but the bulk of my graphics create a large U. See, I'm just creating this U here. And that sort of holds the text and makes it easy for the viewer. Same format here, graphic on the outside edge, text on the inside edge. So by having the same layout or a layout guide, we call it a grid for each page, um, that creates unity for the viewer. One more thing that creates a little bit of unity, I'm going to click on this panel, which is called Paragraph Styles. Let's make sure I don't have anything selected by clicking over here in the pasteboard. And I have a body style. I'm going to double click it to show it to you. My body style is, this is the text of my article. It's Times New Roman, regular, 10 points, and 12 points of letting. The point size of the text and the point size of the letting, typically this, is, this number is 20% larger than that number. And for your newsletters, I'll ask you all to do 9, 10, or 11 point text. Nothing smaller, nothing larger. There's a lot of good reasons for that. And, oh, one more thing about the body text. I also added a color to it. Let's see, where's color? So you can see I created a dark blue for the text color. The other things that I created for it are, I wanted it to be, let's see, a line left. That would be instead of justified, which is the normal things, uh, either a line left or justify, full justify. And is there anything else I set up? I did not set up a left indent because I thought to myself, if I want an indent, I'll type it in. And then other styles, I have a subhead style. Let's see what that is. Double click to see what the style set is. I made that 12 point over 12 points. So that's, that, the letting here is set solid. It'll never be more than two lines, so it won't matter. And I made that avant-garde bold as a typeface. I think I made that blue as well. Yep, so it would look consistent. Let's see what page I used a subhead on. Here we go. Let me zoom in a little. These are subheads. I also have a style called headline, and that's what this is. So let's double click on headline and take a look at that. The headlines I also set solid. They are 20 over 20, and it's ITC avant-garde book, and it's also that blue. So I'm going to cancel this and just show you how those are set. Once you have them set up, they're great. So first I'll make this headline into a regular body style. So that's got the same style as the body text. And now I'll put it back to, back to a headline. So you can see here, once we have those styles set, I'm just going to make this a headline and then I'll take it back. Headline. Nope, I don't want it to be a headline. Subhead, yes, that's what I want. So once you get these styles set up, and I'll show you how to do that too, it just makes it easier to format your text. So those are all the preliminary things that I wanted to show you about how to get started on your newsletter. We'll do a little bit more work in the next three videos.